just a quick stream uh, for the moment. Let's just talk with some of the folks on Discord. Um, so, at the moment we are getting the, um, we're testing the new motherboards for the first 400 batch of Mega 65s to go out. And one of the changes on them, one of the only changes actually from the um, uh, the dev kits, is that we are doubling the size of the flash. Um, so that means you can have eight cores instead of four uh, in the flash on the machine. So this is uh, really good and helpful. Um, the trick is that this new flash chip doesn't behave the same as the other one. Uh, so this new one has got uh, write protection uh, and erase protection and various other bits and pieces that are proving just to be a little bit of a, a pain to um, uh, to get right. So uh, the Vivado tools aren't able to um, uh, work with the flash directly because of these features. Uh, so we're actually doing the uh, the flashing from on the Mega 65 itself. So we inject a bit stream via JTAG uh, and then we can uh, run uh, you know, a variation of the, the flash menu on the, um, the machine and see if things work. So this is requiring lots of uh, interaction with the machine. So Trends have kindly set me up with remote access to a Linux box, which is connected to that Mega 65, uh, much the same way that I would connect one up here. Uh, but I can't see the screen <laughs> uh, on there. So we can, those who've already played around with the M65 uh, command line tool, will know that you can actually ask the machine to give a screenshot. Uh, so here we can see a, a bunch of uh, question marks, it's actually where there's graphics displaying because this is showing the ASCII screenshot. Uh, but you'll actually see that it's written the, um, it's got a, a file name there for a, a PNG. So, uh, well, again, I'm logged into a remote machine on SSH, so displaying that will be a little bit of a pain. But that's right, I, the text is enough for what I need to do. Um, but what we want to be able to do is to easily interact with it. So. It's telling me now that I need to press run stop. So I can, there's some magic codes that you can do in the M65 utility. So that will send it. And then I can ask for another screenshot and that all kind of works. But then if I want to interact with it some more, uh, I have to do more of that. Uh, so I'll show you what I've created uh, to make my life easier. So I've just reset the Mega 65 back again. Uh, and I'm telling it I want screenshots with remote text entry reading from standard input. So when it sees this combination, it goes, ah, you want interactive reading from your local keyboard to the Mega 65 and you want screenshots. Uh, fine, we'll do that um, continuously. So this display, so this is actually when the Mega 65, if you set uh, uh, one of the dip switches in the case, it enables writing to the flash from outside the hypervisor, but so that you don't accidentally brick the Mega 65, um, it basically tells you that you really don't want to, to boot with switch three on. So it's telling you to turn it off. Uh, and the border uh, screen, hey, Gihev, hey, Feroy, welcome along, um, that it uh, changes the border color. So this is running multiple frames per second on average. And again, it's like an SSH connection from Germany. So there's some interactivity uh, entertainment. And you'll actually see that the border will change different colors at different times because it's actually sampling the border color. Uh, and there's a bunch of magic keys that you can press that uh, interact with it. So I can press uh, tab is bound uh, to, the reset, sorry, to the run stop key, which will then release it to boot. And so in theory, I can just type on my keyboard. Whoops, except I have to do these positional keys. But I'm just typing on my uh, keyboard on my Linux box here. Whoops, keys in the right spot. And OK, there's a, a, a little bit of a delay. Um, but it's working and so I can run that program um, and again I can use tab to simulate run stop oh. <laughs> some other junk in memory that's fine uh, so let's just go I equals 
Oh, we haven't. So, okay, so some keys I haven't got mapped through, right? Um, so what I was hoping to do there was to um, to do a, a loop so that we can actually see um, how many frames a second we're getting. Uh, but we can do something like this. Oh. Right. So clearly you know, some of the shifted keys and stuff aren't working. That's right, we'll improve this as we go along. You can have M65 remote desktop. Exactly, this is what it is. Um, and you see it, it's glitching occasionally, so we get some of those Bs and there's some rubbish on the side of the screen. But frankly, I don't care because the point is that I can now interact with the machine uh, remotely. And so we can see this is just you know, printing endless dots. Um, that's working. Uh, let's actually print peak. Five, three, two, four, eight. Uh, so what I want is DO12 plus 18. So that will be 76. No, it's 66, isn't it? Yep. Just so that we can get a, a sense of, because this is just a, a value that's going to change on a regular basis, right? So I'm getting, yeah, it's, it's probably about one frame a second. Um, but um, yeah, this is all nice and easy. So, oh, hey, Richard Combs, welcome along. Um, so all you have to do in the uh, the next version of M65 that I'll be pushing is M65 dash capital S um, T and a minus. Um, so we had a, a doctor's appointment. So we're sitting in the waiting room there this morning. And so I fired this up and you know trying to debug these uh, issues with the flash. Uh, interacting with a real Mega 65 on the other side of the world. Um, hey, Targets. So, um, we can now, what I should actually do is improve it further so that we can actually inject programs and stuff in while it's running, but I'll leave that for someone else to do because I don't have the time to uh, tackle that at the moment. But so I can run this flash program, and this is actually kind of what got me wanting to do it because it, it often wants you to press space and stuff as we're going through. So. Um, which we can do. So reading a whole pile of data from the flash, we can see the page size is 512. This is all good and fine. We can get some more information out. And then it goes into a, um, a flash memory monitor so I can you know, browse my way through the flash. And we can see that that all looks erased at the moment. Um, now the change that I'd just been making to it was checking these protection flags that have to be FF. If they were zero, 0, then we can't write to the flash. Because uh, the issue that we're having is that it will sometimes let us um, uh, erase and program, but it's not doing it a lot. There's something weird going on. So now GIHAF, uh, oh sorry, um, for you saying, yeah, so how long until you can use this to remote debug monitor with this? Um, well, in effect, I can because I'm just logged in via SSH, so I could quit uh, this interactive piece, uh, and I could be using a you know, M65 debug or something. So there are some funny little problems with it that probably make it less ideal for using it for a continuous debug uh, kind of thing. But in principle, why not? Um, GitHub. So remote shell to Linux box in Germany, which is connected to a real Mega 65 via USB cable. Correct. Uh, yeah, Akmafin saying, wait, you're remote using a Mega 65, so no reason for anyone to get their own if we can all share that one. <laughs> well, yes, if you don't mind one frame per uh, second ASCII, like we're on an old mainframe, right? It's all kind of a bit retro. Um, yeah, so so this is really nice. Actually, one of the things that they'd also tried to set me up with, because we were having trouble with the flash chip locking up, was actually to be able to remotely power the Mega 65 off and on. Um, so they've put it on some kind of power switch circuit um, unfortunately that's not working but I've actually managed to, to work around the, um, uh, the things here so Akmafin is saying it's a mega frame exactly um, with all of the, the same joyous interactive experience um, yeah <laughs> Cassidy Robson is saying all we need now is a punch card or paper tape uh, and presto mega 65 batch system exactly um, but yeah it's 
I thought I'd share this because it is it's just really cool uh, in that we can interact with the um, uh, you know, the machine remotely uh, and do various things. I mean, again, some of this stuff will probably also get used within um, automatic tests. We want to start doing automatic uh, regression tests. Um, yeah, which would be really nice. So just to, to show what's going on at the moment. So I've just hit T, which is this kind of little test program that tries to erase the sector. So that will turn all the bytes to FF, which they already were. So that's good. Um, and the E and the F is kind of showing the first few bytes of the, the, the two different um, 256 byte blocks because this flash does 512 bytes at a time. Uh, and then the thing after the P, so the 0, 0, 0, 1 and 0, 2, uh, that's the first few bytes that will get written uh, to the flash, in theory, in theory, because um, at the moment it's playing funny buggers with me. So in theory, now that I've written that, that should have changed that sector that we can see up there. Um, and also this next one, because we're only showing 256 bytes at a time because it's 40 column mode, C64 mode, right? Um, what's frustrating is that I've had it working either erasing <laughs> or programming, but not both at the same time. So it's, there's some weird things with the um, uh, the SPI going on. So um, again, we probably want to reset the machine ready. So some of this I could would be nice to further automate than what I've already got. Um, so here's our. Um, JTAG flashing, well, I'm calling it JTAG flash because it's designed for being pushed in via JTAG. Um, Retrochrome says, hmm, we need a, a BBS hosted on Mega 65 now. Yeah, ab so you, you, you wouldn't use this particular mechanism, but you're absolutely right. Uh, the Mega 65 would be fantastic to run a bulletin board uh, with the 100 meg ethernet and you know the RAM and the CPU speed and the storage. Uh, it would be really, really, really good. Uh, we'd like to do that. Uh, but we've also got the, um, the ability to have the Mega 65 compatible web pages already with the little fetch browser thing that can do images and text uh, and links. Uh, and I intend to add the ability to download files with that uh, in the not too distant future. So these three hash defines up here uh, are. Um, hey Anton, welcome along. Um, I presume you, you've seen we're busy hacking away on the. Um, uh, the flash on the R3A Mega 65 mainboard at Trends uh, remotely. So you, you probably didn't see the party trick that we we're doing just before. Uh, a new mode of added to M65 uh, utility. Uh, so that's all lovely. That's a screenshot, but it's actually it's interactive. I can you know, uh, type things, and yes, it's a little bit glitchy but I'm remote controlling and being able to interactively see the screen from uh, a Mega 65 that is you know, 17,000 kilometers away and on the opposite side of the world uh, in a, a closed office building. So yeah. Kaza uh, Robson says I worked for PC board back in the day and wrote my own crappy BBS on the C64 in the day. Yep, it's, it's good fun. Uh, and Foroy says, I had a friend that ran a, uh, a CNET BBS that outgrew her C64, then C128. So I wrote a clone of it to run on the PC. Yep, very cool. Yeah, Aquafin here, this is a nice view PC font with mega text. Yeah, so we, we could do uh, the X term kind of magic. Um, and I got really excited. I actually know how to do proper graphics in an X term uh, window. It's a little bit fiddly. Uh, but could actually, if we wanted to, make it pixel perfect. But it would be a lot slower then because it would be transferring a, a whole pile more data uh, for every frame. Whereas this at the moment is, you know, it's about one frame a second. It's just enough to show the, the blinking cursor uh, from the, um, uh, the display. Yes, yeah, so Aquafin, you're quite right. If we had a, a pesky font um, for uh, Linux here, then we'd be able to, to view it uh, with that. And, and that would be pretty cool as well, right? Um, so let's uh, I don't know the right windows in that one, but that's what I can click here. So I'm just gonna update the um, the JTAG flash program. So we 
sore. I've just... Actually, what I need to do, I'm going to disable this QPP write. So these are three different ways that we can kind of change the way that we're doing the SPI flash writing. Uh, so we uh, need to run that on there. So that will run it on the Mega 65. And yeah, so we don't want a single screen. We want to do our funky new interactive mode. Uh, and so let's see if this will work. So you can actually see up here, so we, we, we're reading stuff out of the flash. This is actually all uh, correct. This is registers uh, in the flash rather than data from the flash. Uh, and so we, we're decoding that out correctly. We're recognizing what the part is and we're recognizing uh, various own, uh, you know, various parameters out of it correctly. That's all good. So we should be able to write to the flash but we're not <laughs> um, there's something fishy going on and if I try I can actually change the program Oops, need to stop that uh, we'll change the source Having that um, flash monitor is really just a, a little uh, test thing that I'm doing. What we really want to do is reflash slot series. So this is what is designed for what uh, for trends rather to use when they are actually making the Mega 65, so that they can put the initial bit stream on. So we can load and run that. And again, it just shows the information about the flash so that they can check to make sure that that all looks all right. And it will then ask us which core file we want to flash. And again, I'm interacting with this with the keyboard remotely from here in Australia to select the, uh, uh, the core file and everything. And it will now erase it so we get to see our, <laughs> our progress bar uh, as you would if you're running locally. And because the flash is already erased, it's going through uh, really quickly and then this is what's happening so this is trying to write the first block of data uh, and it's coming up with uh, a write error so we can detect that again from what the, uh, the the flash has to say for itself and it continues to have the right error but what's interesting even though in that little test program before we couldn't write to it quite likely um, this will have actually written that first page. So even though it's complaining about an error, uh, it's actually fine. Uh, so we need to re-enable our flash inspector. I need to push that file by SSH across. Yes, yeah, so Anton, so erasing is working, uh, but writing, wouldn't say it's still protected, writing is just being a pain in the backside. Um, it's working sometimes for me and not other times. Um, and right, so we're moving to basic, so I can now load program. And so before every key press, I was having to do a separate M65 command until I made this uh, funky little interactive feature. Okay, so that hasn't erased the flash. That's oh, right, it hasn't written to it rather, it's erased it, but not written to it. So it's the writing in general that we're now having a problem with. Um, so I'm going to have to plow back into the data sheet and try to figure out uh, yeah, what the, uh, the problem is there. Um, oops, I thought we were in C64 mode with this. Yep, that's right. Should be able to do that. Yeah. Yep. Oh, no, I can't remember the, the, the SYS to go back to C65 mode. Doesn't matter. Um, but anyway, so that's yeah, a bit of an idea as to the tools and things that I've made uh, to work with this that hopefully will be uh, a bit interesting. 
The other actually nice thing with this, you can see I can move the cursor around. Um, this is actually parsing the X term uh, scan codes generated by moving using the actual real cursor keys on the uh, uh, the Linux box. Um, so it's quite nice uh, in that particular regard. So yeah. Yeah, Aquafin said this is about as remote uh, as work can be from Australia to Germany. Next stop, the moon. Yeah, then the lag will really suck. Or Mars, right? You know, press a key and wait 14 minutes in the worst case uh, scenario. Um, so, yeah, cool. Anyway, so I'll stop streaming now. So I'm talking less and fixing more, hopefully. But um, hopefully that's been a, a little bit interesting uh, for folks to have a look at. And we'll catch us around. See ya.